stocks to watch on Bloomberg Quint, and I'm Alex Matthew. Now, we've got lots to discuss today, so let's jump straight into it. My guest today is Mayuresh Doshi, Head Equity Research at William O'Neill. Good morning, Mayuresh. In yesterday's session, I was looking at the banking pack, and it came off very strongly, continuing the move that began perhaps in the middle of last week. But I want to talk about the latest notification from the RBI on bad loans that came out yesterday. And the central bank has directed all banks to fully automate the NPA classification process by the 30th of June. And that also entails that the process of provisions will also be automated. In the current context, and this is my question, we've seen that the larger banks have all come out and said that they're adequately provisioned to account for the stress emanating from the pandemic. But could this cause a spike in bad loans? And which stocks stand out for you as clear buys and holds in the banking space? Morning, Alex. Uh, thanks for uh, having me on your show. So I think the notification which came in yesterday, I think it's in the right direction in terms of what has happened with the industry in view of uh, both asset quality pressures faced uh, and the moratoriums because of the pandemic, uh, which have induced uh, further provisioning on their balance sheets at this point of time. I think the automatic uh, recognition, once the systems are implemented by June 2021, uh, I think that will probably bring about a lot more in terms of both the audit trails uh, that the central bank will have on an automatic basis, as well as more uh, transparency in terms of how banks are reporting the reported asset quality numbers and how the provision has been made, which will be entirely systems driven. Uh, I think a few processes which RBI has put forth right now is still that some manual recognition still happens, which they completely want to eliminate. And this is a good news in terms of the sector as a whole. So as the sector transitions towards these new mechanisms, what probably happens both in terms of investor interest as well as the reported numbers on a quarterly basis, I think there'll be far more transparency on that front. Bankers, Alex, apparently over the last few quarters have already adopted a lot of mechanisms that RBI have mandated. Uh, so whether it's a uh, creation of watch lists, uh, the BBN below watch list that we probably talk about, uh, whether it's the SMA1, SMA2 accounts that we are talking about, uh, and the provisioning thereof, uh, I think all those systems and processes are very much in place with CBS coming through and the integration with the core banking software itself. Uh, I think a large part uh, would probably be recognized, but they don't want to leave... Uh, any, any, I think, uh, anything which is not outside the purview. So I think everything which probably gets accounted for should get into the system itself. Uh, so yeah, there is a possibility and that cannot be ruled out uh, in terms of uh, some pressures coming in from some quarters in terms of uh, weaker sections or weaker sectors which lending has been done and where I think provisioning might be mandated to increase going forward if asset quality pressures crop up in the next few quarters. So there is a possibility of uh, a higher recognition coming through. Albeit, I think most of it has got recognized, in my opinion, in the system. The larger banks have transitioned to that. A lot of PSU banks have also done that. But I think the remaining pieces of the entire jigsaw puzzle is something that the RBI wants to get through. So yeah, I think uh, uh, what happens uh, is going to be interesting in the next few quarters. Uh, whether banks uh, probably start recognizing a few more assets before the transition to the new system mm. in the next uh, three to four quarters. Uh, and what happens in terms of the Supreme Court hearing in the next uh, 10 days uh, in terms of the moratorium and interest on interest, uh, I think that right. is an overhang for the sector as well. So private sector banks uh, probably is a little bit better placed on, but I think the time will come in the second half for, for all these banks. Uh, very quickly, Mayuresh, in the sector, what are your picks? Uh, and a very quick answer. We'll move to the next talk very quickly then. Yeah, so as I said, I think uh, the second half will throw out uh, winners from this sector. So as per our cancelling methodology, I think we'll still wait and watch because of all these overhang factors on the sector. Okay, fair enough. So wait and watch. Remember that the sector has seen a little bit of a correction in the recent past. So it's clearly a sector to watch this week as well. The second stock is somewhat straightforward, Mayuresh. PVR came out with numbers yesterday and really has borne the brunt of the pandemic. I must say that's reflected in the numbers that you see on the screen as well. If anything... Uh, the numbers were worse than expected. Would you say that investors in PVR and indeed in the segment should hold on with the hope of a recovery? Or would you say that it's time now to press the sell button because that's too far off to think about right now and balance sheet is likely to erode significantly from this point? So, so Alex, I think the interesting part was where the number of uh, the income came from. And then I looked uh, deeper into the numbers and it was more in terms of sale of some uh, F&B part that they're done and digital uh, distribution of some of their movies. Uh, but yes, you're absolutely right. I think the lockdown induced pressures uh, 
it was a no brainer i think uh, with no movie theaters on i think the sale of movie tickets were absolutely zero having said that uh, the fixed cost is something that they are now focusing upon and the expectations in terms of the guidance that they gave in terms of 40 to 45 crores in terms of production they've actually come down to around 32 odd crores on a monthly basis which probably means that the cost optimization is very much on track now when these lockdowns will come off and when these uh, Uh, induced lockdowns will ensure that movie theaters come back and in what proportion do they come back how much is the footfall because of uh, constrained uh, uh, viewership in terms of people entering the theaters and therefore the f&b revenues getting it as well which is the most gross margin segment for movie theaters or exhibitors uh, i think all this let pressures are still going to play out uh, now the stock has moved significantly from the lows that it will probably see with the anticipation of all these elements happening but it's still not happening at this point of time so structurally and as per our methodology i think uh, it's still a little bit uh, weak in terms of earnings profile it's still a little bit weak in terms of our own eps rating the hk holding itself looks uh, a little bit they see even at this point of time the capital raising that they've done is more to as fund uh, the kind of work capital constraints that they've got and debt property is a little bit higher even at this point of time mm. so i think uh, stay away from this stock at least in my opinion i think a strong move already has been made uh, we probably would still not look at stocks i think look at leaders within the other sectors well. fair enough the last stock is an interesting one i think uh, uh, mayuresh because jb chemicals and pharma it you know, came out with numbers again yesterday uh, num- the stock is nearly doubled on, in the year to date period and on friday itself the stock gained another 5% the results as far as i saw it were strong to say the least what's your rating on the stock and are you comfortable with the valuations as they stand right now so valuations can always be an argumentative point at this point of time right uh, but yeah numbers were uh, relatively stable relatively strong as rightly pointed out i think the product profile and portfolio that they possess uh, is very very strong uh, the institution ownership uh, alex has gone up significantly so if you probably look at uh, the institute holding which is a very very critical component at what we look at in terms of the deal methodology has actually gone up so mutual funds are holding almost 12% uh, of the stock as we speak the earnings growth rate uh, has been consistently around 15 16 or percent uh, if you look at the ebitda margins uh, they've been pretty strong as well so if you probably look at ebit margins between 20 to 20 percent is extremely extremely strong and that reflects in their roes at 18 to 18 and a half percent so i think strong balance sheet strong product profile uh, the stock moment has been extremely extremely strong and robust over the last few weeks and months valuations might be a tad bit on the higher side uh, but hey i think the earnings are coming on back of uh, strong growth that the stock is exhibiting so yeah any investors who probably holding on can hold on to but would you recommend a fresh buy in this or would you say there are better picks in the pharma space and which would those be uh, yeah so i think uh, if you probably look at the stack up in terms of midcap pharma our own take is that uh, a stock like torrent pharma though the valuations there of uh, also might be a little bit uh, uh, on the average side uh, the product profile that they've got specifically for the indian prams business is almost 50 or percent uh, within the us business they are expecting to have good launches and they've got reasonable the amount of diversification when it comes to the overseas business so the branding portfolio in germany in brazil is growing at a good clip and therefore i think the over dependence on us probably gets mitigated on the international operations as well strong balance sheet gains of 27 or percent roes of 27 or percent and they are expecting to reduce debt to almost 1000 or 12 so the debt equity should come down significantly as all these branded portfolio launches and margins hold up reflecting in better roes well that sort of sums up uh, what we are talking about today mayesh as always uh, an absolute pleasure having you on the show thanks so much for joining me today and, so and to you dear yeah. viewers i hope that this conversation helped you as well do stay tuned there's a lot more coming up in just a short while on bluebird quit